The iPhone 12 is official. Apple announced not one, not two, not three, but four new iPhones, all of which support 5G. And between the new cameras, the new body design, and the iPhone 12 mini, there is a lot to be excited about. So now I'd like to show you the very first iPhone with 5G. So let's jump right into this. Just like the iPhone 11 family, the new iPhones are named the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, and 12 Pro Max. There's also the iPhone 12 mini, which puts the iPhone 12 into a smaller, more affordable body. It's the smallest iPhone you can buy new, and I am so excited. It's even smaller than the current iPhone SE, and yeah, it has 5G. As far as price, the iPhone's 12 will cost the same and be more expensive than the iPhone's 11. Here's how that works. The iPhone 12 mini starts at $699, the same as last year's 11. The iPhone 12 starts at $799, but the prices for the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max stay the same at $999 and $1099 respectively. Meanwhile, you can now get an iPhone 11 for $599, an iPhone XR for $499, and an iPhone SE for $399 and you can pre-order the 12 and 12 Pro starting October 16th. And both phones will be available October 23rd. The 12 Pro Max and 12 Mini can be pre-ordered starting November 6th and will ship starting November 13th. These iPhone 12 names are a mouthful, right? But hey, let's talk about design. All of the new phones have a new hardware design with squared off edges a la the iPad Pro. You might even say Apple is taking inspiration from the iPhone 5, 5S and the 2016 OG iPhone SE. It's kind of like the bodies of the iPhone SE and iPhone 11 had a baby. <laughs> I think this is how they would have a baby. It's not a bad thing. The iPhone 12 and 12 mini have aluminum edges, which house the 5G antennas. And compared to the 11, the 12 sounds like a Radiohead song. It's smaller, thinner, lighter, Sadly, no mention from Apple about killing moths or putting boiling water on ants. Color-wise, the 12 and 12 mini come in black, white, product red, mint green, and dark blue. Meanwhile, the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max get stainless steel edges for those 5G antennas and come in silver, graphite, gold, like really shiny gold, and Pacific blue. And both Pros have textured matte glass backs like the ones found on the iPhone 11 Pro. As far as storage, baseline 12 and 12 mini models come with 64 gigabytes. Now, I'll be honest, I was kind of hoping they would be higher. Like the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max start out at 128 gigabytes of storage. Now, one of the biggest changes across all the phones is the sizes of the displays. Both the 12 and the 12 Pro have a 6.1 inch OLED display. And yes, that's bigger than last year's iPhone 11 Pro, which had a 5.8 inch screen, but the body of the 12 Pro actually is about the same size, maybe a couple millimeters bigger, but that's impressive. The 12 Pro Max also has a bigger display. It's 6.7 inches, AKA the largest screen on an iPhone ever. Then there's the iPhone 12 mini, which has a 5.4 inch screen. And that is larger than the iPhone SE screen, but without the iPhone 8S bezels, chin and forehead, the body of the iPhone 12 mini is actually smaller than the SE. And I'm particularly excited about that phone. Apple said it worked with Corning to make the toughest screens on its phones. Apparently the screens are glass that gets infused with nano ceramic crystals to make them tougher. Apple claims four times better drop performance, AKA four times the chance of your phone surviving a drop from your pocket. And that's great. The other great thing is the screen is on all four phones, but let's talk about 5G. Today we're bringing 5G to iPhone. Just like we've seen with most Android flagship phones this year, all four phones support 5G. They support millimeter wave 5G, which has some of the fastest speeds available in the US right now, but you gotta be pretty close to those towers to use them. They also support low band and mid band 5G, which offer more range, but slower speeds. Think of the difference kind of like AM, FM radio. Not exactly, just kind of like it. Now, Apple optimized iOS to be faster and more efficient on 5G and also created a smart data mode which toggles between 5G and 4G LTE to save on battery life. Now, if you're interested in getting any of these iPhones just because of the 5G, I recommend checking out which carriers offer 5G in your area, what the speeds are like, and what the carrier's plans are for building 5G app. Now, normally new cameras would be the biggest feature 
of any iPhone launch. So let's talk about it now. All right, so the main wide angle camera on all four phones has a new lens with a F1.6 aperture and a new sensor. Apple claims that this offers a 27% improvement in low light. At 52 millimeters, the 12 Pro has a similar telephoto lens as last year's iPhone 11 Pro, but the 12 Pro Max gets a new longer 65 millimeter lens, which offers a 2.5 optical zoom in that's compared to the two times zoom in we've seen on previous iPhones. Both Pro models also have LiDAR, which stands for light detection and ranging. It's gonna work great for AR apps and detecting objects, depth and spaces, but also help with the cameras for autofocus and photos and video, especially in low light, and even allows for a new portrait night mode feature, which I'm excited to try out. All of the cameras are powered by the A14 Bionic chip. According to Apple, the new brains of the iPhone 12 family are 50% faster than any other phone sold today. Now that's some Android shade right there. Android shade, boom. Now, the A14 chip brings with it Smart HDR3, which is kind of like Rambo 3, not really, I just like saying that, but it optimizes dynamic range of photos, identifies scenes like skies, and optimizes for people's skin and hair. Smart HDR3 and Night Mode work on the selfie camera as well as the rear wide and ultra wide cameras. Then there's Deep Fusion, which helps in medium and low light to improve things like textures, and that's gonna work across all of the cameras, including the telephoto cameras on the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. All four phones can record video in Dolby Vision HDR, which automatically color grades your videos in Dolby Vision standard. Now, that's supported up to 4K 60 frames per second on the Pro models and 4K 30 frames per second on the 12. And what's great is all of that's inside the Photos app, which is kind of amazing if it really works like that. I just can't wait to see the results. The iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max will also be able to record a special RAW photo file called ProRAW, which Apple described as having a file with the flexibility of a RAW photo, but with the smarts of computational photography. Now this sounds like a feature that will probably come out later. I don't know if that's gonna be at launch. We'll find out. Now also, there is a ton here in regards to photo and video capture that I'm glossing over, but just know, dear viewer, that once we get our hands on these phones, we're gonna go more in depth with all of that. Now, let's talk about the time wireless charging met a thing called MagSafe. You remember MagSafe from your Mac laptop a few years ago? Like if you tripped over the power cable, it would pop right out because it's held on by magnets. Well, Apple's applying this whole magnetic principle in a different way to your phone. And the idea is to improve your wireless charging experience by helping align your phone's position and the charger for the best charging efficiency. Apple's gonna be selling a MagSafe charger that supports 15 watt wireless charging for all the new 12's phones. Apple will also create an ecosystem of cases that's built around MagSafe that allows you to charge through the case as well as add accessories like a detachable wallet. Oh, I should say that Apple is emitting wired ear pods and the power adapter that would normally come in the box, but they are including a USB-C to lightning cable for fast charging. That said, one of the arguments Apple made for not including the ear pods and power brick was that there are already so many existence and many people already have multiple of them, and I kind of agree with that. Except how many people have a USB-C power brick at home? I have tons of those old five watt ones with USB-A, but yeah, so what am I gonna plug this cable into? Now your experience might differ depending on what you have at your house, okay? But hey, that's all I've got on the new iPhones. I look forward to testing these phones and putting together an in-depth review, but right now, I wanna hear from you. What do you think of what Apple announced today? What do you think of the new iPhone designs? What do you think of the 5G? And what do you think of that iPhone 12 mini? I'm really excited about that one. Throw your thoughts in the comments.